Chibi. Um, not yet. It's, it's still saying waiting for the host to start this meeting. What's up, Burilo Gonzaga? How are you, buddy? We didn't start the meeting yet, though. Okay, now, now it's connected. I can see you. Oh, no. What's up? We're not starting yet, though, guys. You still have 20 minutes. Nice to see you, buddy. You can see me, uh, uh, Menachem? Yeah, I can see you. Make sure it's muted. Uh, you're muted on Zoom so that we can speak. What's up, Albert Lassery? The only thing is, guys, we're only starting 20 minutes. We're just doing our preparations, okay? But um, I don't see you. Uh, I don't see you.
Murillo, if you could hear me, give me a wave at me. Good man. All right, guys, starting in 14, starting in 14 minutes. You guys are awesome. Thank you for joining. What's up, Shalemi Feldman? Start in a few minutes. Hello. Binyamin, how you doing? Hey, Barrel, what's up? Thank God, we're starting in 12 minutes. What's up, handsome? Are you ready to rock and roll, baby? Uh, look, yes. I'll call you, I'm gonna be back soon, okay? No problem. <laughs> We are not going to do it. See for me. Oh.
Thank you everybody for joining. It's Big B here. We're gonna be starting in nine minutes. I love you guys, nine minutes. What's up, everybody? It's Beryl Solomon. How are you doing? Thank you for being here. We're going to be starting in four minutes. Four minutes. Thank you, everybody. It's going to be awesome.
All right. Hello, Zoom. How you doing, everybody? Woo! Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining all the wonderful people. Big shout out to all my peeps. Thank you so much. It's going to be awesome, guys. I'm super excited about it. Been super pumped up. Um, we're going to experience some really, really cool things um, going forward. I just want to make sure everything is okay. Everyone could see me. Could I get a wave if you could see me? Could I get a wave? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Um, give me just one second. All right, guys, cool. So let's get this party started. Here's how it works, all right? We are facing the most difficult economic time that anybody has ever seen in our lifetime since possibly the Great Depression, as you guys probably know. Tons of people have already lost their jobs. Tons of companies have gone out of business. But what does that mean for you and for me? Do we have to follow that boat? When this whole thing started, people would say, people would say, people would say that they are interested, that everybody's on the same boat. We're all on the same ship. I don't want to be on the same ship. Now you start seeing that people are saying we're all in the same storm, but I don't want to be on the same boat that is sinking. I want to be on a successful boat. Raise your hand if you guys are with me, right? We want to be on the successful boat together, right? We don't, we don't want to be on a sinking ship. We want to be in the right direction. So I want to share with you guys personally what I have done since this whole thing started two months ago and how I've pivoted and how you could pivot in your business and your career starting right now, not in a week, not in a month, and not when the government allows us to go back to work. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I did not sign up in a totalitarian society. I am a free member of the world. I will social distance, I will be a mensch, but I'm going back to work whether you like it or not. Here we go. Hashtag the great recovery. I've been using this since the beginning. Why? Because people are saying that this is like the great depression, but if this is not the great depression. Let everybody be else depressed. You and I are joining the great recovery. All right. This is how we're going to do it. Number one, accept that everything has changed. Nothing will ever be the same. Just look at a few industries. Take them. For example, the NBA, the NFL, the NHL, Airlines, cruise ships, restaurants, it's all over. The game is over. Nobody's going on another, nobody's going on another cruise for a really long time. I don't know about you. I'm not. I just don't trust it. Watching people for the past two months on a cruise ship, it's not for me. So everybody in the cruise, if you're in the cruise ship industry, I got bad news for you. You gotta give it up. The game is over. Give it up. You gotta figure out something new. You have to accept that everything has changed. You are not going back. You are not going back to the way that things were. Okay. My business is not going back to things, the way things were. I walked into my, into my office two weeks ago. It was the most depressing thing in the entire world. I used my blood, sweat, and tears for the past three and a half years to build up my business. And in one foul swoop, it was all taken away from me. And I walk into my office and it's a, and it's a ghost. It's a ghost town, nothing going on, nothing happening. And all I had was this depressing situation on my hands. The question is, how do I move forward? You cannot move forward until you accept that everything has changed. People think, you know, they lied to us at the beginning. People thought that what was going to happen is they were going to tell us, go home for two weeks, go home for two weeks. And you're going to now come back to your office after two weeks and everything's going to be the same. They lied. It was a big lie. I don't know why they did it. Maybe they didn't have bad intentions, but now I'm two months out and the game is still over. All right. There's no signs of opening. If you guys are watching from other countries, maybe you're not as lucky, but in Canada, they started giving people free. They started giving people free money. It's the craziest thing. You literally don't have to work anymore in Canada. I can't get people to work for me anymore because people can't work. So the first thing you have to do is accept that everything has changed. Once you've accepted that, then you can move on. I went through this. I went through the exception point. I cried like a little baby downstairs in my office. It was not pretty. It was miserable, but I cried. I got over it. I made a joke to myself. I said, I'm not big B anymore. Now I'm little humble B starting again. So if I have to start again, chances are most people are starting again. I'm starting from zero. 
Everybody here has to accept that. Everybody here has to respect that. There's no shame in starting from zero. I had to do this in my father's business three and a half years ago. I built up a business for myself and my father's company over eight or 10 years. And overnight, the thing was taken away. I had to move. I had to go start another business. So I have experience in this restarting and rebooting. And I'm going to teach you guys how to do it. And it's not as hard as you think. And actually, it may just be the biggest blessing that you ever had in your life. Because chances are, if you got fired from your job because you were non-essential to the company, then you were miserable to begin with. And chances are that if your business was chased out of the market because it's non-essential, maybe something wasn't working in the first place. So maybe, just maybe, this may be the biggest blessing that has ever happened to you in your entire life. And now let's figure out how to turn it from bitter to sweet. We're going to do that together. Number two thing you have to do is decrease expenses. I don't know about you in Canada, you know, in Canada, what they did, I got an email from my bank a month ago saying, Hey, by the way, if you got affected by COVID, I'm like, hmm, yeah, I definitely got affected by COVID. Um, you can now apply for, um, to have your mortgage pushed out for six months and it's going to add an extra $20 a month. And I started calling my friends, Hey, are you going to do this? Are you going to do this? And no, I don't need to do that. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm like $2,000 a month over six months. That's 12 months. Cha-ching. Let me take that 12 grand and let me go figure out how to reinvest it into another business. Let me take that 12 grand and have it as oxygen for my family. Let me take that 12 grand and do something about it. All right. So decrease expenses. Now is not the time to go on vacation. You can't even if you wanted to. You cannot even if you wanted to. By the way, it doesn't mean be a cheapo and don't splurge. Your wife wants a nice dinner. She wants to order a dinner. You want to treat her. You have to treat your wife. Your husband wants whatever husbands want. I don't know what husbands want these days. Um, but you have to treat, don't, you don't have to be cheap in that certain sense. But what I'm saying is now is not the time to be remodeling your house, people. Now is not the time to be, you know, playing the stock market. If you never played the stock market, you got to decrease your expenses and every, you have two cars. My, my car, my lease is expiring in six months. Guess what? We're going to become a one car family. Why? Because I have to No, because I want to, because I want to save the 800 bucks a month. So now the 800 bucks a month on the car, the two G's a month on the rent. Now I'm saving 2,800 bucks. Sweet. I'm starting from zero people. I'm humble. You got to get humble right now. It's not about being proud. I see all these people walking around. They're so proud. Everything's okay. Nothing's okay. The world is a mess. Everything fell apart. Am I the only one that realizes this? Everything fell apart. Go to your local mall. It's closed. Do you know how messed up that is? All right. Bring it back to zero, baby. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back and throw the pride out the door. Throw it away. No room for pride today. I'm getting rid of the car. If I could drive a Toyota Corolla, I would. I promise you I would but I can't, I'm stuck with the Jaguar and I feel foolish for driving around in the Jaguar. I really do, I really do. I think anyone who drives around a Ferrari right now should be ashamed of themselves. So all that stuff went out the window. You know, even in my company, Wealthy Commercials, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with it. I wish it was called Essential Commercials. Anything right now that is essential is what wins. Anything that is ostentatious is obnoxious. Okay, so don't have shame, the shame is over. Take it back. Could you turn, could you open up the door? Because it's really hot in here. <laughs> the front and the back door. Thank you. What's up, guys? By the way, we're gonna get to your uh, we're gonna get to your questions by the end. So just like write them, but really I'm only gonna get to them at the end. Okay, number two is decrease expenses. Number three is turn off CNN. I noticed something very, very clear. The front door and the back door, if you don't mind. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. I noticed something very, very clear. All right. I stopped watching CNN a long time ago, literally like a month and a half ago. I was getting like heart palpitations every time I watched it. It was driving me absolutely crazy to watch any any type of any type of news channel to one point at one night. I woke up having a panic attack, a panic attack. I couldn't breathe. I thought I was catching covid. I thought it was I, I, I had a panic attack. My wife also she had a panic attack one night when this is all going on 30 days ago. I couldn't watch it anymore. They're schlepping body bags out of hospitals. And they're just waiting for that image to show you and just show you and show you and show you. I shut off CNN. I shut off Fox. I shut off CNBC. I shut off the BBC. I even shut off Al Jazeera. Okay. And, and the point is, is that when you shut that stuff off and you go take a walk outside, it's normal. The world is normal.
What's actually going on outside is a normal thing. But you go turn on your television, you open up your social media, they want to keep you glued to your couch. They hate when you're not glued to your couch. It is in the news channel's best interest to keep your butt in your house, on your couch, in fear. That's where they want you. Just shut it off. Just detox. It's not worth it. Go forward. Number four, strengthen your trust in God. This is probably most important. I know after this, I'm going to have a Jewish friend say it should have been number one. It should have been number eight. It should have been number 10. It should have been 2.5. It should have been the name of the thing. But number four is strengthen your trust in God. Number one, above anything. When this whole thing started, you probably saw a post. And if you follow me for any amount of time, you hopefully see my post that when this whole thing started, gave $4,000, $1,000 to each of the rabbis of my synagogue right before Passover. My whole business fell apart. All my contracts fell apart. Everything was miserable. But I knew that everybody was canceling their donations because everybody, what's the first thing that they cancel when things get bad? They cancel their charity. That should be the last thing, by the way. I gave four grand to charity. That four grand has multiplied itself times 20. Okay, that thing has done such blessings for me. Strengthen your trust in God. It's all about God. We are all on this. You know what ship we're all together? We're on God's back. And if you understand that if you're on God's back and you understand that everything that God does is for good. And if you understand that there's such a concept called in Hebrew, I'm going to tell you what it is. I don't know if anybody else speaks Hebrew here. Maybe a few people. Yerida Sorech Aliyah, which means you have to go down in order to go up. What that means is anytime you want to jump, what do you have to do first? You have to bend your knees and then you could jump. Any great moment in your life, any hard thing, anything that you ever accomplished, if you look back in your life at the hardest moments, whether you got fired, whether you got broken up with, whether you got divorced from, whether you got whatever it was, if you look at that situation, what you will realize is that situation made you who you are in your core, in your essence, and it was the best thing that ever happened to you. So when you understand that everything comes from the one above, when you understand, can I get an amen, that everything comes from God, then you understand that he is running the show and it's not COVID and it's not Corona and it's not Donald Trump. May, may God bless him um, in a real way, by the way. You, if, you, if I lose some members watching, that's okay. I love Donald. If you love, if you understand that God is the one that runs the world and he is completely sweet, then you will start to understand and see with your eyes that everything he does is for good. Even this mess that we find ourselves in. Number four, trust in God. Number five, pick up the phone. Pick up every great thing in my life, every business deal that I've done, whether it was from the age of 16 years old or until the past eight weeks, every deal that I've closed, every job that I got, every business that I started, any deal that I did started with a phone call. Hey, Billy, how you doing? And I'm going to give you a hint, okay? Don't call. It's going to sound harsh. It's going to sound harsh. Doesn't mean that they're bad. And but you have to understand that we're talking about we're talking about how to be successful in business. If this was like how to help humanity, it would be a different advice that I would give you right now. But this is advice on how to be successful in business. When you're picking up these phone calls in relationship to how to be successful in business, Make sure that you're calling people that are wealthy. Make sure you're calling people that are higher than you when it comes to wealth. Make sure you're reaching out to people that are able to help you. Usually wealthy people can weather storms, okay? When they have means, it means that they have a good business. And by the way, if their business is suffering temporarily, they'll get through this. People in real estate, they're going to struggle for a little while, but they'll get through this. People in the food business, they may struggle for a little while. They will get through this. People in, usually people who are successful, who are wealthy, who have means, those are the people you want to anger onto and you want to say, hey, what are you up to right now? What are you doing right now? How could I be of service? How could I help? What could I trade? What could I do? You have an opening for me? I'll come work for free. The government's paying me anyways. Let me come sit in your office and learn. I'm happy to do it. I have a friend. I have a friend. He sells meat. He's one of the most successful guys that I know. And I reached out to him. They happen to be one of my clients, actually. I reached out to him and said, hey, listen. I'm not ruling anything out. I might end up selling meat for you in your office. Would you be interested in a salesman? He said, I would love to have you as a salesman. 
Am I going to do it? I don't know. We're going to see, but at least I know that that door is open, right? I have a friend in the transport business. I said, hey, I said, hey, Aldo, he's one of my friends, Vitez Transport, if you're watching this, bless up. I said, Aldo, what are you doing these days? What are you moving? What's hot? What goods? He said, well, alcohol is really hot. He's moving all kinds of things. I said, Aldo, by the way, you have room in your company? I might come work for you. He said, you work for me. He's a nice Italian boy. You work for me. Hey, barrel. sounds good. It may never happen, but at least the door is open. Since then, those two situations, those two stories happen to be two people that I reached out to. Aldo, I've moved, I can't tell you how many truckloads of goods with him, importing whatever chazarai I've been selling from hand sanitizer to face masks to stands to you, who knows, hand wipes, face wipes. I've done so many deals with him. He's been a partner with me because I've been able to put my stuff in his, in his warehouse and he ships it all over the United States and all over North America for me. So he ended up being a partner with me. And then the other guy who's in the meat business, I said, what's really hot? What could I sell easy, fast, uses a lot of meat? If you're following me on LinkedIn, he said, dog food manufacturers, we like to supply them. You could supply them low quality meat at high volume, straight goods. So I posted on my LinkedIn, hey, anybody looking for any, anybody, anybody manufactured dog meat, dog, uh, dog food in my network? Sure enough, one guy comes up to me and he says, yes, I do. I said, what type of meat do you want? Get this. He wanted something called pizzle. Pizzle is the private parts of a bull. He takes container loads of private parts of bull, they cure them, and they feed them to dogs as dog treats. Dogs love to bite on them, believe it or not. So guess what? I might be in the dog pizzle, bull pizzle business. And it all started with a phone call. But reach up. Don't reach out to your broke Uncle, Uncle Joey. And don't reach up to your mom who is so petrified to leave her house that she, she's scared of her own, her own sneezing. She's trying to get away from herself. Don't reach out to the people that are putting fear in your head. By the way, everyone has to protect their mother and be nice to your mother, of course. But don't call her for business advice right now. Reach up to people that could actually write you a check. Reach up to people that could actually allow you to trade or to be part of their business or even go work for them. Reach up to the right people. But it all starts with a phone call. Next, restructure and pivot your product. What do I mean by that? I'm just going to give you my particular situation, okay? Our main business used to be taking videographers and flying them out to locations to film. Today, you cannot fly anybody and no one's letting you in their location, which means that my business went down the drain. So we got creative. So what did we start doing? We, first of all, we started reaching out to our customers, right? Number five, pick up the phone, saying, hey, customer, previous customer. By the way, the easiest person to sell is a previous customer. The easiest sale is the second sale. The hardest sale is the first sale. So you want to go now to your <laughs> life is hard enough right now. You know, to cold call right now is probably the most miserable thing you could possibly do. I suggest against it. I think it's a wonderful opportunity to stimulate your network. There's enough juice there for you guys to either find a new job or find new products. Okay. So you want to call those old customers and you want to say, Hey, what do you need right now? So it happens to be, um, we've had some clients that have completely changed their offering for COVID. So now they need marketing that is geared towards COVID. One of my clients makes hand wipes for used to make wipes for phones that clean the phones. Now they're, now they're offering it in a COVID angle. So now we have business to do with him. Nursing homes have a problem right now because they can't allow people to walk into the nursing home. So we now have a product where we send a stand, we send a light, we send a wireless microphone and they talk into it and they film it and they send it to us and we edit it for a fraction of the cost, right? So we you restructure and pivot your own product, right? You got to figure out how to make, I mean, I, I don't need, I need to tell you how to do this. You, you could see it in your own backyard. You have restaurants that never had any deliveries and now they're offering deliveries. So if you're a restaurant and you're close, shame on you. You should be offering deliveries. And you should, you should promote it by offering and by going to hospitals, let's say, and, and taking pictures of you. It doesn't even matter even if you donate one, one, one bag of, of, uh, of whatever it is, of hamburgers. 
just as long as you're doing good and using that as an example. And that is your advertising. Again, if you own a restaurant, shame on you, man. You should be open right now. Just doing deliveries like crazy. Knock on doors, door to door, whatever it is. You have to tweak your business to be able to open it up. Again, don't wait for the economy to open. Don't wait for the elected officials to open. You guys got to get out there and get moving. Guys. They're not going to give you permission until the next two, three, four, five weeks. You're stuck in your house if you really listen to them. And by the way, you could be still stuck in your house, but do it in your basement. Do something. <sighs> Number seven, figure out new products. All right. This is a very touchy subject for me personally, because I really love video. I really, really do. I was really, really good at it. I built this business with my blood, sweat, and tears. It was so hard to do something besides that. I always told my company, we're always going to do video no matter what it is that we do. Well, that's good if you're zoom.com but I wasn't positioned as zoom.com. So my immediate clients had to all push their stuff back. So I had to figure out how to create business and how to, how to really make money because that's what we have to do in order to give charity, in order to support our families, in order to pay our rent. It's not a dirty word. It's not a, it's not a secret. Every person in this world has to make money. So how do we do it? You figure out new products. The world is now changing. The world has now shifted. Now we're entering into a new era. Remember number one, except everything has changed. If you own a chain of grocery stores, I would be very weary of what the next three, six, 12 months, 24 months is gonna look like. Because I'll tell you myself, I probably will never walk into another grocery store ever again as long as I have to, because I discovered the joy of ordering online. Walmart, I probably will never step into Walmart ever again, unless I have to. So everything is shifting online. I'm a, I'm a young guy, I'm 31 years old. I never used to shop online. Now everything's, everything's online. So the world has fundamentally changed. How could I take a piece of that action? So I have a friend, for example, part of my, if you remember, number five was pick up the phone. One of my friends, his name is Shalom Ganevish. Um, and he, actually, no, sorry, it's his brother. And he has an incredible product. Mendel Ganevish has an incredible product. What they do is they help grocery stores go online. So your local grocery store, he has a service that will help them go online. So in my calling people, remember, I'm not giving you advice that I can take myself. Number five is pick up the phone and call people. In my calling people, he was one of the guys that I called. And I said, hey, what are you up to? He says, I'm crazy busy right now. And in my mind, I'm like, cha-ching, I love when people are crazy busy because that means that they're moving things. That, that means that the world needs them. That means that they're essential right now, right? Which we all want to be. I never want to be non-essential again. Whatever business that I go into, you better believe it's going to be essential to human race. Um, so I said to him, what are you up to right now? He said, listen, I have this, I have this service where we take people go online. We help, we help grocery stores go online. He says, we're, we're blowing up. He says, for 11 years, nobody wanted to hear from us. And all of a sudden, we have 300 new clients that just came on. Well, part of that conversation is, hey, let me talk to some of my buddies and let me see if I can move your product and help them get online. Sure enough, I have a friend who owns a, who owns a grocery store here in Montreal, very successful, and we're putting them together and Big B is going to get it cut. Right? You have to think of that. You have to think outside the box right now. You have to sell new products to new services. So there's the world needs things. There's pockets of demand. I'm not suggesting to go into the mask, mask business because I think that business is saturated. It was fun while it lasted. We all had a good run. And I think it's over because I think now boats are coming over from China. I think that hand sanitizer has a little bit of room, probably like 30, 40 days. But you have to find the things even above 30, 40 days that the world is going to need. I think homeschooling is going to be a huge service in the future. I think that out of 100% of the people that have had to keep their children at home, let's say that there's been 2 billion kids that have been at home. Let's say 1% of those parents actually enjoyed having their kids at home. I don't know why they would enjoy it, but probably some did. Uh, <laughs> I'm just joking. It has its perks. But out of those 2 billion children that were home, probably at least 1% is going to now stay home. So what's 1% of 2 billion? I have so many people watching. That's 2 million. Is that 2 million? Is that 20 million? Whatever it is, 2, 20 million, 200, whatever it is. 
20, I think it's 20 million. 20 million children are now going to need homeschooling. That opens up incredible opportunities. You could open up a homeschool online streaming service where you get the best Harvard graduate, the best Harvard teachers that no longer want to teach at Harvard because they enjoyed sitting on home, at home for the past three months of their life. You say, hey, Mr. Harvard teacher, how about I pay you $200 an hour in your off time and now you do live streams for 400 kids and teach them algebra. It would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? That's just an example, right? There's new opportunities coming into this new world and you have to figure out where those opportunities are. Even by the way, in the, in the supplying of PPE, personal protective equipment, there's, like I said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of competition The masks don't go into it. It's just, it's just silly right now. Everybody's in it. It's done. I'm out. Um, but stands, I'm selling these like hand sanitizer stands. I'm killing it with, with God's help. We're doing great with it. Why? Because it's a product at every school, every restaurant, every hair salon, every, every office is going to need. And guess what? Everybody's overlooked the stands because everybody went to the masks or everybody went to the hand sanitizer. I went to the hand sanitizer stand, right? Or even right now, I'm quoting on alcohol to supply to the hand sanitizer manufacturers, meaning there's pockets, there's pockets of, there's pockets of demand in the world. I mentioned this in one of my videos. There's a major shortage of flour in the world. I don't know if anybody knows that. Major shortage. You have to find where the pockets of demand are and take advantage of those. What? Shoes for kids. Whatever. It's a small idea. My wife just reminded me. My, my children need shoes. I cannot go to the store to buy shoes. If I really was a hustler, or if there's any people out there that really want to hustle, go to Walmart, buy 20 pairs of shoes, and go walk around to all your neighbors and let them choose a pair of shoes. And if you bought them for 20 bucks in Walmart, sell them for 40 bucks to your neighbor so they could try on the shoe on their kid. My kid's feet hurt. We can't buy shoes for them. I'm not buying shoes online. So there's pockets of demand right now. You have to just find where those are. All right, next, get positive attention on social media. This is so incredibly important, okay? I, before Wealthy Commercials, which is probably before a lot of you know me, was a very quiet guy. I worked in my father's business. I had my clients. I had my customers. I was very quiet. When I opened up my own business, I had to explode because I needed to bring in revenue to feed my family because I had no revenue coming in, like literally none. Like literally they shut off the lights in my house at one point. Like literally like this, bang, lights out, all right? My mother-in-law was in town. It was rough. Hi, Sarah. I actually see you're watching. How are you? Um, she could tell you. True story. All right. I had to get myself known. I had no choice. So I started posting everywhere what I was doing, bringing people along the journey with me and rebuilding my business. And by the way, I was doing it before it was cool. I was posting about having miserable days before it was cool. The nice thing about today is everybody's having a miserable day. Everybody's having a miserable time. It's miserable out there. Okay. So instead of posting pictures at the park, everything's perfect with my kids post, I'm going through a really hard time right now, but I'm getting myself dressed and I'm going out there and I'm going to hustle. And if God blesses me, thank you, God. And if he doesn't, I'm going to go back tomorrow. Okay. People want to know the real story. You know why you're watching this right now? Why I believe you're watching this right now. Why I hope you're watching this right now is because you appreciate the fact that I'm honest. You appreciate the fact that I don't BS, even though it's my initials. You appreciate the fact that I tell you when I'm having a great day, and you appreciate the fact that I'm telling you you have a bad day, okay? And that's where you have to be. You have to be honest with the people that are watching. So you need positive attention on social media. We donated with my partner, shout out to Daniel, probably like 30,000 masks when we first started. And that mass posts, those, I, we weren't planning on going into, into, into supplying masks, but because of the posts that we made about, about supplying so many masks, everybody started reaching out to me for masks. So I had no choice but to go into that business, right? So you have to get positive attention on social media. And by the way, sometimes it hurts. Sometimes the attention hurts on social media. Something happened to me today. A guy shared my, what's it called of this, uh, my advertisement of this, of this webinar and he shared and he said, what did he say? Looks like Beryl Solomon is starting to lose it. He is trying desperately to gain followers on social media. Looks like he's finally cracked. 
It was so hurtful to me. I'm like a nice guy. I'm a nice person. And it was so incredibly hurtful to me. But you know what I did? I just blocked him and I said, you know what? That's one guy. I don't even know who he is. He knows everything about me. By the way, the people that like you on social media check you once a week. The people that hate you check you four times a day. Fact. Okay. So you got to get out. You got to get your name out there. You got to let people know, hey, I'm still alive. And by the way, my hands work, my brain works, my heart works, and I'm ready to roll. All right. You got to let people know that you are in the game. Because if they don't know that you're in the game, they can't hire you, they can't buy you, they can't sell to you, they can't flow to you, right? Any, if you want inflow, you gotta have outflow. The more outflow you have, the more inflow that you're gonna have. You send out, if you send out spam, don't send out spam. But if you spam a million people, you're gonna get a few hundred responses back. If you send no emails, you're gonna get nothing back. So your outflow has to be very strong right now. Nothing is happening to you on your couch. Nothing is happening to you in your basement. And nothing is happening to you in your room. Only when you reach out into the world are you able to bring back, right? Even if you look how you fish, how do you fish? You're sitting on your boat, you have your fishing rod, you put it into the ocean, you reel it and you bring it in. But it all starts with that outflow. It's all about the outflow. So you've got to post on your social media. I don't care if you're a private person. I don't care if you're ashamed of your beard. I don't care if you're ashamed of your weight. I don't care if you have never done it before. People have to know that you exist. If you're a real estate broker, make up deals. Post previous deals. Post about what you think the market is going to be. Do an Instagram live about what you think the market is going to be in Brooklyn in the next six months. I don't care. But people have, people have to remember you. Because when this thing is over, people are going to want to pick up their phones and they're going to want to call you. And, they're, and if you entertain them and if you help them and if you gave them value and content and you were in their homes this whole time with them and they finally need to buy their piece of real estate, guess what? They're calling Susie because Susie has been there the whole time. Okay. Just like this right now, I'm in front of you guys. You're in front of me. More likely there are 74 people watching this on zoom right now. I don't know how many people on Instagram cause it's turned around, but chances are, let's say there's a hundred people out of these hundred people, we're going to do business together. You know how much business I've done with God's help in the past few months, in the past 60 days with people from Edmonton, Alberta, Calgary, Ontario, New York, New Jersey, Texas. Why? Because they know me from social media. So I asked them to send me a wire for $100,000 so I could send them a truckload of whatever Chazarai I'm selling. For people that don't speak Chazarai, don't speak Yiddish. Chazarai means like whatever. It means goods, materials, junk, whatever. Whatever it is I'm selling. I don't sell junk, by the way. I only sell very good products. Disclaimer. Whatever it is that I'm selling and they're sending me their hundred grand as a wire, guess what? They already know Big B. They already trust me. You think they're gonna you think they're gonna wire a hundred grand to Tom Tom Jones that they never met before? Maybe Tom Jones. But you think they're gonna message you you think they're gonna wire it to someone they never met before? No, they're not gonna wire anything because they don't know you. So they're not gonna flow you. You gotta have outwards, outwards, outwards. All right. So that's number eight. Get positive attention on social media and guys please start putting your um questions thank you so much so i can answer them not comments questions there's a difference okay find another job i'm sorry guys what do you want me to tell you you have to find another job it's done it's over if you were fired it's done or if you were let go or laid off it's done i had at the height of my company I had 19 people working for me. At least six to eight of those were editors, full-time editors. And I have to tell you, I probably will almost likely never go back to that model again. In this whole thing, in COVID-19, the way that I started doing it was I had a project. I said to the editor, great, it's $500 or it's $1,000, whatever it is for the project. And they have to... Now they have to say yes or no, if they want it, great, if not, not. But I will probably never have eight full-time editors sitting in my office getting a paycheck every week. So now they have to you know, bid on the contract. So those eight full-time people, I've already had this conversation with them, they know what it is. They have to now look for something else. If they want that full-time contract, I think that they can make more money by the way, doing contract work like for me, because if they're getting two or three guys like me a week, now they're making 150 grand instead of 45 grand, right? So there's opportunities even for them to grow, which goes back to my point that this might be one of the biggest blessings of their lives. So this might be one of the biggest blessings of your life too. 
maybe you were miserable in your job. Maybe you were miserable in what it is that you're doing. Maybe God sent this whole thing to you, just maybe to wake you up, to bring you out so you could explore your true potential. Maybe, just maybe that's what happened, more likely than not. Um, by the way, please put your comments in the thing. I see someone here said, you can resume to grow wealthy commercials. I have every intention to resume wealthy commercials. And by the way, we're doing business. We're doing business. We have, we have three shoots in Texas in a week and a half. Ellie's macro has closed the deal, baby. Good job. So we're doing it. We're running that business, but it's going to take time to build it up. I'm probably 75% down right now. I'm operating at 25%. I'm operating lean. I'm operating intelligently, but we're going to build that thing. But Hey, in the meantime, I'm going to figure out new things to do because I can't sit on my hands. It makes me too nervous. So number nine, find another job. Don't wait for your employer to call you and say, Hey, we're back on. If he or she has not done that already, it means that they probably are not going to do it. This poor girl, she started working for me like a week before COVID. And um, she was like fresh out of school. It was like one of her first jobs. And we like literally had to shut our office like a week after she started. This poor girl, I haven't spoken to her. I hope she's not waiting for me to call her. <laughs> I think maybe somebody should reach out to her. But she's not getting hired back at my company because it's only essential work essential workers and essential people, which brings me to another point, by the way, you have to make yourself essential right now. You know, I, I realize there's something very important. There's two types of people in this world. There's people who bring value and there's people who manage value. Most people are the, are people who manage value. The people that bring value are what is needed right now. And you have to turn yourself into somebody that brings value. I'll give you an example. Elias Macris is probably watching this. He does sales for me. Nine out of 10 of the sales we've done, 99 out of 100 of the sales we've done up until this point have been, I brought the lead to the table, I made it rain, and then Elias pushed it to the end. Elias and I have had conversations in the past few weeks that we're now becoming partners in a certain way because now he's going to also bring value. So he reached out for my stands, for example. He reached out to a company called Sentas here in Montreal to start selling the, sand, the stands to them. So Elias became somebody that was managing my value that I brought to the table. And now Elias is now bringing his own value to the table. You have to figure out how to bring value to your table and to the table of other people's tables because the people that manage value are going to have a rough time. I'm really being serious right now. I think like assistants are going to have a really rough time. I think that like secretaries are going to have a really rough time. Like executive assistants, like your executive assistants is the first thing you get rid of when things go sour, you know, like any luxury. So you have to make your, you have to bring, you have to make yourself somebody that brings value. How do you bring value? You pick up the phone. There's no, that's where all the value starts. You guys, each person that's watching this has contacts, has a network. You build that over time, take advantage of it. And last but not least, take control of your life. I decided very on, very early on in this whole thing that I work too hard in my life to let other people tell me what I should be doing. And I have to tell you in the beginning, when I was still trying to move forward and grind, I got a lot of pushback from people because people who is sitting on the couch right now and who is happy about COVID. Like there's some people that actually don't want COVID to go away. Okay. There's some people that hated their lives before this whole thing happened and misery loves company. So they're very happy to be sitting on their couch miserable right now, because guess what? They were miserable before COVID and now they want you to be miserable with them during COVID. And if you end up, leaving the fold and flying away from the nest and going to go rebuild your life that was shattered. Again, maybe I'm making assumptions here. Maybe nobody's life was shattered and maybe everybody's hunky dory. Maybe I'm the only guy's life that was shattered. Okay. But those people don't want you to rebuild your life. They want you to be miserable. They want you to stay on the couch just with Anderson Cooper and the same with your nervous mother. She wants you to stay on the couch. She doesn't want you to move. She doesn't want you to grind. She doesn't want you to groove. She wants, she enjoys walking with you every day for four hours a day. Okay. But you have to take your life into your own. You have to take control of your life. Don't let anybody dictate your life. What it is to you. Don't let stay within the confines of the law. I'm not suggesting breaking the law, whatever the law is in your government, whatever they, whatever they follow it to the T but you cannot allow the other people, the media, everybody to control your life. You have to take that into your own hands. 
and you have to not be scared to rebuild yourself. You are able to grow. You, re you built yourself this entire way and you're going to be able to rebuild yourself again. You have to reinvent yourself right now. Now is the time to get creative with who you are and what you're able to be and what you're able to achieve. And at this point, I think we're going to take some questions. Maybe I want to give also a shout out to Menachem Krasinski for helping me out with, uh, with the Zoom. He's actually the, uh, the host right now. He offered very kindly uh, a day ago to help me and he's been tremendously valuable. So Menachem, how do you want to do this? Do you want to unmute people and, and let them come onto screen? Or should I just read out the questions? What do you think, Menachem? Okay, while well, you answer me, I'll let you know. Am I muted right now? Nope. All right, here we go. Question. Thank you, Duncan Beaumont. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, Menachem, Menachem Krasinski, you want to unmute people? So you want to start with Duncan Beaumont, if you could find him. So Duncan Beaumont asks, Beryl, how much time each day do you have, do you a lot to social media? Same every day or does it vary? Do you have recommendations? Interested to know. Um, Duncan, thank you for your question. Yep. I tried. Are you there, Duncan? I'm here, yep. What's up, buddy? Where are you, where are you calling from? Uh, Woodstock, Ontario. Woodstock, Ontario. How you doing, buddy? Good, thank so, you. Sorry, what was your question? Could you tell the people? I'm wondering how much time you allot each day to social media. I follow you. Um, I'm, I'm big on it. I also have grown my network that way. But I... I'm just wondering if you have some sort of uh, a similar pattern every day or you it's just what you do when you can do it or if you have a, an allotted time that you must get so much in per day. Um, first of all, thank you very, very much for the phone call. Like Ontario where? Like in Canada, Ontario? Yes. Yeah, You're Southern Ontario. You're originally from Scotland? Oh, originally from England. England? Well, I was way off. I'm sorry. I just embarrassed myself in front of 78 people. Um, okay. So you're from England. Cool. Welcome. Welcome to the party. You're a good man. So what do we do? What do I do personally? I try to make one post at least a day, no matter what. It could be a picture. It could be a story. It could be written. It could be a video. It has to be one post. The real question is, what do you post every day? I'm going to give you guys a million dollar secret, at least in, in, in social media dollars. Are you ready? The million dollar secret to, to how to make incredibly good posts consistently is to just document what's going on in your life. Every person has a script writer that is writing every step of their life. And he happens to be the best script writer, script writer that ever was. The script writer of your life is better than Shakespeare. It's better than any author that you can imagine. And that is the one above himself. Every person goes through incredible experiences. And as long as you document those experiences. So again, if I'm moving a truckload of hand sanitizer, I post that I'm moving a truckload. If I'm closing my office and I'm miserable about it, I'm saying I'm closing my office due to COVID, but we're going to be back soon. Whatever it is that's happening. If I'm having a nice day on Sunday, by the way, it doesn't have to be only business. Having a nice day on Sunday. I'm here with the kids. I'm having a great time. I love my wife and kids. Best Sunday ever. Just document what's going on and be honest about it. Does that answer your question? Good man. Thank you so much. All right. Let's go to, let's keep on asking questions, guys. Um, Duncan, you asked your question. Bill, Bill Craig. Can you take off Bill Craig? Nope. Sorry. Don't take off Bill Craig. Looking for questions here regarding putting content from your experience. What kind of content usually goes viral? Okay, Sarah, same type of thing. Sarah asked what type of content usually goes viral. Usually the truth goes viral. But you have to be prepared for the backlash because the truth hurts. And a lot of times people don't want to hear the truth. So what type, what goes viral? Truth goes viral. So if you post on your Facebook right now, for example, that you're sick and tired of the government locking us all in our houses and you want to get back to work, probably it's going to go viral. But you have to be prepared that at least 20 to 30 to 40% of that is going to be with very angry people towards you. So um, be careful. But you want the, I, I don't mind it at this point. I, I developed a thick skin for it and you should too. Um, let's keep on going. How does one begin to build a social media campaign? Which apps, platforms to begin with and budgets? Same type of thing, guys. It doesn't, please don't be fancy. On every social media that you have, by the way, you should add as many friends as you possibly can on LinkedIn, on Facebook, 
Instagram, you can't add friends. You should add as many kinds of people as you can. Doesn't matter if you don't know them. Your network is your net worth. I heard a very nice quote recently. A guy said he'd rather have a thousand friends than a thousand dollars. Let me say it again. I'd rather have a thousand friends than a thousand dollars. Okay. I think it's self-explanatory. Let's keep on going. It's kind of difficult to document what is going on when you're on your couch every day. Yes, I completely agree. So get off your butt and let's go. Um, keep on going. Guys, ask your questions, please. Elliot, are we getting any on Instagram? Are we getting questions? I think Jeremy Cohen wanted to ask a question. I unmuted. Jeremy Cohen. Oh, you know what? That's a great idea. If you have a question, please message Menachem Krasinski. Okay. Menachem is spelled M-E-N-A-C-H-E-M. Menachem, message him, message him, and he's going to unmute you, and he's going to sort of cue you up. Menachem, is that okay? Yes, yes, great. That's a good way to do it. Okay. Someone also asked here on Instagram, are conversations delayed right now because of this pandemic? Are conversations delayed right now because of this pandemic? No, I actually noticed that right now is the best time to get people on the phone. By the way, try calling a guy or a girl that would never answer your phone calls. They're answering your phone calls. Why? Because they're humble right now. Even the richest guy that you know, or the richest girl, or the most successful person, they're feeling humility right now because they are messed up just like the rest of us. So when people are humble, they answer, they answer phone calls. So maybe projects are delayed, but conversations are better than ever. Sorry, Menachem, who had a question? Who did you queue up here? Yumi Cohen. Yumi Cohen, what's cooking? Good looking. Thank you, thank you, Beryl. Thank you. Can I, Beryl, uh, it's hard to see those uh, posts that you, beautiful posts that you're posting behind you. Can you make those? behind you those points yeah so i'm going to uh, i'm going to post these later on whatever wherever it is that you follow me thank you facebook instagram linkedin i'm going to post that okay 10 steps to the great recovery menachem uh, menachem cue it up okay well, i'm going to take one on instagram hi marcus ask do you have anyone answering your emails for phone <laughs> shabbos um, hi, Marcus. No, I do not have anybody answering my phone or emails on the Sabbath. Even God rested on one day, and I can too. So I believe all my blessings actually come from observing the Sabbath. But uh, if you send me an email on the Sabbath, I promise I'll answer at least the day after. Cool. Thank you. Menachem, any questions? Yes, one from Cheryl. Go ahead. Hi, Cheryl. Cheryl, come on down. Hi. How are you? Nice good. to meet you. Oh, so my question is, is there a good product to sell to long-term care facilities right now at this point in the coronavirus? Are you in that business, Cheryl? Are you in the long-term care facility business? Um, well, I used to be a social worker, so I have a lot of contacts in long-term care. And sure. I live in Metro Detroit area. Sure. So do you want to be a social worker again or no? Mm, not so much, but I could, I do have a degree in marketing. So if there was like a good product to sell, sure. then I would think about trying to sell to them since I have a lot of contacts there. So here's my suggestion. Okay. I would find a uh, group of, let's say, long-term care facilities, you know, a, a bigger player, maybe they own four, five, six, ten facilities, and I would offer to go work for them, um, and I would run their social media for all of their, for all of their campaigns, because long-term care really needs, they've gotten so much bad press over this whole thing. I mean, every right. time you turn on and you see body bags being shoveled out of, shoveled out of a, out of a long-term care facility. Um, but that's what I would do. That's what they need. Uh, Here's what they, need. They, they need, need PR. Around. Yeah, they need good PR. And since you have a marketing degree used, and since you've worked in social work before, call up your old friends you used to work with or the old buildings you used to work with and use those networks, use those people to, to, to propel you into selling now your marketing services. But I don't work for them, to be honest. I want to try to sell them. Say, hey, let me come and work for you for 50, 60, 70 grand a year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean you up and I'm going to get you out of this PR mess that everybody's in. That's what I would do, 100%. That's a very good idea. Thank, Thank you for you. your question. Thank you. Menachem, anything, you got anything else? Let's keep on rolling. I see here that Bunker says, could I ask a question? There you go. What's up, Bunker? How you doing, Big B? 
How you doing? <laughs> but you, we have to see your face. It's not fair. Oh my God! I'm gonna put the kids to sleep. Let, let me go someplace else. Not right. It's not right. It's okay. It's you okay. Know? Everybody has. Everybody. Oh, has, here we go. There Listen. You go. How, you, how you doing, buddy? Thank God, doing great. I have a question. I, I've, I'm getting a lot of work from LinkedIn, and I feel like I can get a lot more attention on LinkedIn if I go even sillier than I go. My yeah. trouble is, I'm afraid if I do it, clients are not going to take me serious. I wonder if you have any idea what the balance is between going very silly and getting more attention, but not losing the trust with customers being a little more serious. So none of my clients take me seriously. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm in construction. The contracts are million dollars, five million dollars. So they need to take me serious. Listen, That's, you're not their lawyer. You're not their. You're not their brain surgeon. I don't think I would want my brain surgeon making you know jokes during performing surgery. But you're mm -hmm. their contractor. Like you're supposed to be someone fun for them to deal with. So if it's getting you attention, then double down on it and use that to your people want humor. I'm not so funny. People want humor. Um, I'm going to like buy some more whiskey. And aggressive and my wife I'm going to buy myself some more whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Go buy whiskey. My wife tells me like I yell too much at the camera. I don't even realize it, but Hey, if that's yelling at the camera works for me. So just like do what you do, be yourself because guess what? You can't not be yourself because I've done right. it before. When you try not to be yourself, it makes you depressed. You can't sustain it. It's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. You have to be yourself. Thank you for the question. You're a good man. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. What's the name of your company? All Air HVAC. Shout out to All Air HVAC. God <laughs> bless you, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Menachem, you got a good one? I have one here. Guys, if you have, I'm going to, first of all, thank you to my wife, Eliana. Shout out to you for, um, for helping me orchestrate my Instagram as well. If you have a question, just post. I sent a message to you question or... Um, post it and say a question and then we'll unmute you. Um, cool. Yes. So, Samuel Ray. Yes. Uh, do you, um, do you think look, uh, lipstick, lipstick, that brands like Louis Vuitton and, and Gucci are going to go down? So everybody heard the question. Do I think that, um, luxurious brands are going to go down? Um, I don't know. I feel bad here if anybody sells luxurious brands, but absolutely. Yes. Um, my wife has a, has people that she follows on Instagram and they, you know, during the height of Corona, they're shopping for Gucci and they're shopping for Prada and showing off their new handbags or whatever it is. She stopped following them. It just turned her off. Like, I think that it's very obnoxious right now to, again, I'm struggling with the name of my company, Wealthy Commercials, really. Um, but I think that people have to realize that those things are not cool anymore you know, essentials, you know, it used to be not cool to go to Walmart. It used to be like, if you went to Walmart, you're poor. Now it's like the coolest thing to shop at Walmart. Like everybody shops at Walmart now and good on them. Good on them. Like I love Walmart. Um, and I'm proud of it today. And I think I would be embarrassed to be driving a Ferrari. Really. I would, I think it's, I think it's shameful. Agent Talila, shout out to Agent Talila. Agent Talila, shout out. Love your painting. His wife, uh, Woo! I mean, she was, uh, she made it with me. Menachem, any other questions? Hi, Beryl. It's, it's Jack and Jen from Toronto. Thanks for putting Jack together this webinar. You know, guys, I don't know why the four of you have been, like, on top over here. Like, there's four people, and you guys have been on there. And seeing your faces this whole time has brought me so much joy. I see you guys laughing and enjoy. You guys look like a wonderful couple. Well, You've been awesome. We've been very much enjoying it. We appreciate the webinar. My, my question is around, does this environment mean that you accept business at any price? In other words, what are the limits of this humility? Because this can commoditize your offering. Sure. Listen, you have to stay in the game today. You have to stay in the game. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Um, when this whole thing started, I reached out to my nursing home clients. And I started to say, hey, send me videos from the people that are in your buildings with their phones. We're going to edit them for free. I made a deal with my editors. and I'm going to pay you 100 bucks per video to edit it. And we shot that back to the, back to the, back to the, what's it called? To the nursing home. Why did I do that? Because I wanted to stay in their good graces. I didn't want to now sell them, you know, whatever it is that I was trying to sell them. And they, they call me a Johnny come lately. Like, where were you when I needed help? So we reached out to all of them. We pre and now after we've done that, now I'm able to sell, I started selling the little things here and there, gowns, 
Uh, they need hospital accounts. I have access to them in Montreal. Um, they're all going to be my hand sanitizer stands, whatever it is. But I had to, I had to show them some goodwill, some good faith in order to um, not look like I'm just trying to take from them. Look, how many companies went free for like 30 days? You know, like that was really, really nice. Um, you know, Grant Cardone is somebody that I follow very much when it comes to sales. And he, you know, has a thing called Cardone University. It's usually a thousand bucks a month. He made it for free for the past 30 days. So I, I think it's the opposite. I think that it helps you stay relevant, but at the same time, you have to follow the money. You can't do everything for free. So there has to be income coming in in some way, shape or form. So don't let people take advantage of you, right? Like that whole free video thing, it cost me 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, but I have an end game to it because I want to sell them. Like if I was, for example, a supplier of a uh, restaurant, restaurant equipment, that was my job. I manufactured and supplied restaurant equipment. I would be pretty scared right now, but I would still be in contact with my clients and still going to go see them. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's just one quick question. So in the absence in this environment of meeting the client or the person in person, which obviously goes to enhance the trust, how do you go ahead and, and enhance that relationship via trust in the absence of that requirement? Um, how do you gain people's trust of meeting them in person? That's what you're saying? That's essentially correct, yeah. So I think it follows um, taking, get positive attention on social media, right? Like, um, I'm sorry. Um, what was your name again? I'm sorry. Jack, 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 Jack. And what was your, what was your lovely wife's name? Jen, 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 Jen Jack and Jen. Is it, girl, is it girlfriend or is it wife? Girlfriend. 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 Well, may, maybe tonight is the night. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Close the deal. Jack, let's roll. Close um, the deal. <laughs> Close the deal, man. So anyways, um, I, I literally have people from, and you're from where? where? Where do you live? Toronto, Toronto, Canada. Toronto. So imagine I had a deal, and part of that deal in, in t entitled sending me a wire transfer before I shipped you goods. So you have option A, Beryl Solomon, and option B, Jack Smith, that you never met, never saw before. Even if Beryl Solomon's price is a little bit more expensive, you're still going to do it with me because you trust me. So it all comes to, it all comes mm -hmm. back to, um, gaining positive attention through social media. People actually gauge who you are through social media. I hope that Super. answers your question. Yeah, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Don't be shy about it. Yep. Don't be shy. Like if I were you guys, like if I was everybody right now, what I would do, okay, you guys like want a great piece of content and just get something out there. What I would do if I was every person, I would take out your phones right now and I'll take a selfie with me on the screen and I'm going to be like this. I'll do it for like 10 seconds. I'll wait till everybody gets their phone. Take a selfie and be like with yourself in front of the computer like this and be like, I just had a great, you know, webinar with Beryl Solomon tag and the great recovery and we're going to make it through this ladies and gentlemen. And there you have a great piece of content and people know you're in the game. People know you're trying to build your skills. People know you're trying to move forward in life and people are going to join you in your deal. You guys want to do it? Anybody want to do it? You guys want to do it? Why don't you guys do it at least? If anybody else wants to, that's okay. Let's do it. Yeah. You have your, you have your phone on you. And um, in your thing also put hashtag. She said yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay, Menachem, while they're doing that, let's put up other pictures, okay? So I'm gonna go like this. Whoever wants to take a picture, you can take a picture and post it. And Menachem, while we're waiting, let's queue up the next guy. Levy, looks like Levy's the next guy. Cool. Levy, what do you got? Levy from Brooklyn, can't hear you, buddy. Levy. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? You hear What's me now? You, I'm just listening. It was probably a mistake. Ah, uh, it's okay. Guys, if anybody else has questions, please message. Please message. It's probably over. Please, please message Menachem. If any, nobody else has questions, guys, it has been great. I love you dearly. Thank you for your time. One more question. Yes, yes. From Mike. Mike, what's good? What's the question? Bring him in. Hey, Beryl. What? 
What's up, Mike? I love your stuff, man. Uh, you're a good guy. What's your last name? Uh, Caulfield. Caulfield. Where do you live? Uh, in St. Thomas. That's near London, Ontario. Wow, awesome. A lot of Canadians tonight. That's awesome. Cool, man. How you doing? Good. I've done a good. tremendous amount of business, by the way, with Ontario in the past, like, eight years. I noticed. Years. Yeah, I've always been hating on, like, Canada and, like, Montreal. But, like, God bless Canada because we have some really, really good things. I thought you were from Montreal. That's why I kind of got yeah. the impression. Yeah, no, I am from Montreal. I am oh. from Montreal. And uh, I never did business in Ontario, and all of a sudden, like, we're flying there. So, cool. Thank you, man. <laughs> so, the question was, uh, what you what's got? your view on working from home versus, uh, you know, an office location? Because everybody's working from home, but that's, you know, everyone's going to go back to work, or maybe people are going to save money on offices now. What's your view on that? I think people work from home. I think that... Um, I think that just like a family needs a house, I think that a business needs an office. I okay. just think that there's a certain magic that happens when people are together and communication is there and people are pushing each other forward. You know, it's very hard to be motivated in the morning. I don't know about you guys, but yeah. like um, for like the first two, three weeks of COVID, I was waking up at like nine or 10 o'clock in the morning. You know, I used to wake up at like 4.45, 5.45 in the morning, even earlier, 5.30, on the dot. I was a machine. Even today, I sleep until like 7.30, um, which is a big sleep in for me, <laughs> considering where, where I was before. But yeah, I think, I, think, I think offices are good. Now, am I wanting to go sign up my $3,000 lease again? Um, no, my lease expired by divine providence uh, on, on um, April, sorry, uh, a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, thank God. I'm going to sign up three thousand dollar lease. No, but I think I can negotiate a good a good lease for a thousand bucks, and I probably will because by when everyone's trying to work from home and they're really only working three, four, five hours a day, and now me and the team are in the office killing it every day, putting in real days. I think we're going to move forward. By the way, that's something I want to mention. It's really easy to move forward right now. It used to be really hard when everyone's running at full speed and everyone has all the capabilities. I found it really hard to move forward today. As long as you're doing anything, you're moving forward. I agree. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for your question, man. Menachem, anything else? No, that was it. You guys are awesome. Thank you so, so, so much for tuning in. God bless you all. Be great. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mazel tov to the new husband and wife here. That was beautiful. Um, Thank you guys so much for joining. Really, we're going to do this again. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it strong. I want you guys to believe in yourselves. Tomorrow is Thursday. It's not Friday tomorrow. Remember, it is Thursday. That means we have two full days left to make it. And another thing is don't wait. By the way, again, this is very, very important. I noticed this. There is a different, there's a different speed during COVID. There's a very different speed. It used to be, I used to make, you know, these cute, I, it sounds ridiculous now. I used to make calendar invites with people for like Wednesday next week. Now it's like, bam, when are we ready to roll? Now or in five minutes from now? Like there's a different speed in COVID. You guys have to throw out your social norms and rules. Call the guy, message him, text the girl, get her on the phone, do what you have to do. The, the, the COVID speed is a different speed. Um, yes, it's recorded. Thank you guys all. I love you dearly. God bless. Have a wonderful night. Remember, God runs the whole world. When you're connected on high, you don't fall down below and go get him. Go get him. Go get him. We'll do this again.